Okay, it seems like we're in the middle of a game between... It just started, so you haven't missed too much. Okay, so... It hasn't actually started. Oh, Neon Blue, is that how you pronounce the name? I'm not sure. I think so. Okay. Ne Neon Blue is on Burn, Ambrose is on No One Tell. Oh yeah, Neon Blue is on that weird Burn deck that plays called Axelion without any fetch lands. So it seems like Neon Blue is on the play, which is exactly what you want as a Burn deck. They even get the Magic Companion on turn 1. Do they have any way to enable Cult Axley on turn 2? I guess they have Storm Surge. Yeah, Storm Surge, but... Meanwhile, Ambrose plays Precursor Sanctum Tap. I guess they have turn 2 Cursey Glance and then turn 4 Foros Fellowship to, and hope you get there. Do you need the 4th land, though? Not guaranteed. Yeah. And you have a pretty good chance of get, getting the 4th land. And if you don't draw a 4th land, then I guess you're probably drawing Interaction or Ramp. Unless you're drawing more top-end stuff that you can't play. You go Storm Surge and uh, Axe Slinger and then swing for five? Yeah. Cool. I mean, yeah, that's all I we can say two. here. It, swing for damage. This is a burn deck. What else did you expect? Next turn, Orchestrate Storm Surge. A companion, one of them gets Glance. Another well, show no, and tell. No, with the Not Orchestrate great. changes, you can just counter the Banished Companion and Storm Surge won't get Oh yeah, Orchestrate cast. got changed. <laughs> yeah, it's on Resolution yeah. now, not on Cast. Unceasing Flames. I mean, you, you have Magic Companion and Unceasing Flames, so at least you're going to get the Orchestrate off. Ambrose is probably going to try to Curse your Glance to Banish Companion, which will prevent more damage in the long run, but this game isn't going to last that much longer if Ambrose doesn't do anything. So, and Ma Ambrose mm -hmm. is taking a lot of damage from their lands, it seems, because they have Rampant Summit and Shifting Glade. They have taken one damage from their land so far. Next turn, they're going to take two if they want to play anything. Or if they just play nothing and lose, that's also an option. The Storm Surge is... So if they cast Unceasing Flames, yeah. it would go off. Right? Yeah, it works as you expect it to. Oh, does Neon Blue have the old version? Imagine. Okay, I guess they haven't Could updated the Cockatrice. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a pretty recent change. In fact, it's the most recent change so far. You know, the pre-GP patch. Well, either ways, what is... I don't think it yeah. changes too much here, because... I guess it does. Unceasing I mean, Flames, yeah. If Neon doesn't draw land, they should have the win. Even if they do draw land, they I think they still have the win, because Ambrose is going to have to ping yeah. themselves in order to tap for mana off the Shifting Glade. That's actually, yeah. Into the woods. Ambrose probably would have... Well, no, they didn't even have time to cast this thing yet. And Ambrose just concedes. No. Yeah, it's classic bird matchup. Mm -hmm. So I guess Python, like, extra glances and early counter magic and stuff. Definitely stand on sayable. Four is on sayable. Yeah. For 30 bolts. Mm, I mean... Is it worth it to go, like, Imperial Siege? No, Try but... slow down. I mean, Civilization cost is probably better, because if you kill your opponent, yeah. then they can't cast any spells. It's like That's, they had no lands yes. anyways. That is very true. And then I guess Rage of the Ravage, maybe, if you're worried about standing on the level, but maybe just want to go fast. Game 2 is underway with Ambrose on the play. Start here, uh, Prophecy. I mean, with it, a lot of ramp, but no show and tell pieces. Well, I mean, it, this would be a good tan, if not for the fact that they're taking so much damage from their lands, but I think they still have to keep true. here. And, uh, uh, Neon keeps the one lander. I mean, it's, it's you're, not you're unreasonable. Burn. Storm Surge. And then turn to Axe Slinger and then just burn the opponent's face. Man. Real hard. If Neon draws a second land, that hand's really good. Yeah. Gonna turn one Seek. Uh, I guess you take Stan on the elbow here. Yeah, you already have those other two ramp pieces, but that does hurt quite a bit. Stan on the does give you time to draw into more pieces. Yeah. Well, Neon Blue gets sprayed in Sacred Lich, which. Uh, Axe Slinger first. Well, yeah, you're playing Mono m m Mountain, so you can't get the turn one fetch into Axe Slinger that more involved burn decks can do. Yeah. I guess more complicated burn decks. More Axe Slinger based deck. So I guess Ambro goes for turn two ramp and then turn three four fellowship. Oh, yeah, that, that four fellowship is good there. Not but sure. They don't have a land, so maybe they just go for. Actually, I think they're fine even if they don't draw land because then next turn they go for. Just ramp again and then. Fellowship. Or you just stand on the table next turn and then hold up Spell Pierce. So fetching Lost Rolls Asus. Hold up Spell Pierce. Right Drop. into the woods, puts into play untapped. Second Mountain. That is what? That's good. Yeah, you can cult and then use one of your spells. Get point by 
just starts off with the sad charm. I feel like I they should have storm searched and then axe layered. That way you can actually get the storm surge off. Because otherwise, okay, otherwise you have to use another burn spell to get storm surge off the orchestrate, and then that means you don't enable axe layer because that's six damage instead of three. Yeah. Well, either way, it seems like I guess, I mean... Neon still gets a swing off. So I guess next turn Neon can just storm surge axe layer. Honestly, Ambrose can just like play stand own saleable and then hold up the gleaming river because that turns off axe layer. But I think it's probably better to yeah far seek. And then hope to not die this turn, I guess. Yeah. Wait, Ambrose is going to die this turn because Storm Surge caught Axlinger and then the one already in play. Mm, yeah, that's lethal. Wow. Uh, somehow, even when the burn deck looks really strange, it still manages to function very well. So I'm not sure if that's a function of just burn being burn or if, or something like scientists have spent so long trying to perfect the burn deck, but it seems like someone can just pull up with some random burn deck and still do super well. Oh, what? Wait, huh? What? Uh, that? Oh, right. Uh, Gleam River turns off called Axlinger, so that orchestrates Storm Surge called Axlinger play doesn't actually work. It doesn't, but spectacularly still? I mean, no. Nope. It's still more damage to go orchestrate Storm Surge into second like alt Axlinger. Yeah. And that's Velier, so that's probably game. Is Velier the... No, you want Turi, right? Because that thing gains you 8 life. Oh, right, you can Velier minus to cast Turi. Only Velier, you just minus and get a token that almost certainly win. No, I mean, you minus 5 Velier to cast Turi, and then you minus Turi to gain 8 life. Mm, you can do that. Ah. That's probably the right play here, so you don't lose to some random 2 vaults, because like if you minus oh, 3 to Velier... Oh, goes, goes minus 5. Yeah. Draws 3, I guess. Free drop Turi. Yeah. Ooh. Cracked. Uh, yeah, that's not good for Neon. Maybe Neon's going to bring in Rage of the Ravage if they haven't already for game three. After seeing what... Well, no, Neon couldn't have cast Rage of the Ravage off this mana base either, so it wouldn't have changed anything. And the scary thing is, well, I guess Ambrose can minus Turi again next turn to... Or no, because Turi dies before the Kraken enters. Ambrose can minus Velier. Could just Storm Surge. Both the planeswalkers, and then he still no. You just you point everything at face because wait, what? No, you're a burn deck. You're not going to win by controlling the board. <laughs> you need to point everything at face so that you can so you might have a chance of winning. Yeah, because like Neon actually had lethal amounts of damage in hand because they do something like Storm Surge, Raging Sacred all at face, and then next turn they Scorch and then Exile Raging Sacred from the yard, and that's twelve damage in total. And Ambrose doesn't actually have a way to gain more life. But they just top deck Turi, so never mind then. <laughs> if they didn't top deck Turi, then they had Triumph Tributes, never mind. Okay. Yeah, Ambrose was going to win anyways, but if you're Neon and you didn't know that, I feel like you should have pointed everything at face because you know that you had lethal amounts of damage in hand if your opponent had no way to gain life afterwards. Turi is a way to gain life, though. Yeah, but the Turi at if... 3 doesn't actually gain you life because minus 3 will kill Turi and then the token enters minus after Turi's already Valier. dead. Oh, yeah, Valier right, right. That actually token. works. Okay. So. Your best bet is like blow up Velier, I guess. Wait, how many? How much loyalty was Velier at? Uh, both were at three. Okay, yeah. Velier had it. Had the necessary. Draw here for neon. Yeah, I don't uh, think this is keepable. Ambrose. Ambrose is at, Ambrose well, isn't keepable. I also don't. I don't think neons is keepable. There's no creatures in there. A lot of yeah. I'm not happy with either of these hands. Oof, that's still. And it gets worse. It's a no lander. Ambrose gets better. Ambrose. Mm. Okay. Yeah, uh, that is a. Is that a double seek prophecy and far seek? I think you're probably going to get something. Yeah, you can turn one seek, turn two far seek, turn three seek again, I guess, if you can't seek what turn, you seek. Hey, turn three, you could just fellowship in time. Yeah. All right. Neon, start here. Neon bonds both the Pacers Rattlers. Oh, really? Yeah, I guess they. Yeah, yeah it's not amazing. See, this is a difference between. Burn and Creature Vomit. If Creature Vomit goes to 5 cards, they can still get super good hands. If Burn goes to 5 cards, every card matters, so See, it's worse. in the middle of a game between Burn and <laughs> a Show and Tell deck, Ricky is still shilling for Creature Vomit. <laughs> it is a very good deck, but also, where is the Creature Vomit? <laughs> Just focus on the matchup, Ricky. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, I just need to find stuff to talk about while those two players are thinking about what the bottom. Wait, Ambrose bottom's I mean, a far seek. Yeah, far seek's a weird bottom there. You can go turn one seek if you hit a thing, then turn two far seek. Turn three. I guess Tyrant isn't the best drop. Maybe because it's only going to gain you a little bit of life. Yeah, but it also screws over their mana base. Since Neon's at like two cards in hand. Yeah, I, I guess Ambros is very favored right now because Neon is so low on resources. Yeah. Go unceasing flame forever. Oh, oh. oh that's a show and tell. Yeah. So, so maybe Ambros is regretting the bottom. Uh, watch four C. Gonna get a yeah. Gonna get a two mana ramp here. Never punished. Well, actually, no. The reason Ambrose bottom there was because Precursor Sanctum was tapped, so there was no way they could turn four to, to show and tell, anyways. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Because yeah, I guess because they're not going to turn can, uh, three to show and tell, anyways. Scorch. That's the burn spell. And just point burnt face and ass. I mean, this is a sad life of burn player when they don't draw any creatures and they have to log in down to five. Yes. Don't be this burn player. Play decks that don't lose when you mulligan down to five. Just play decks that win the game. Yeah. Of all people, I should not be telling people to play winning decks. That's yeah. not my MTG specialty. The, my specialty is playing all the broken decks because I can't deck build for myself, so I just play whatever <laughs> broken deck Profusaki gives me. I mean, yeah. It, and somehow it's a curry. I mean, I'm assuming they're just going to seek prophecy again and play Precursor Sanctum tapped as an option. Oh, Precursor Sanctum's actually that's a show and tell. Yeah, but it's four mana, so it's pretty far off. Yeah, it's five in total because you have to consider it's also a land itself. Yeah. Okay, seems like Ambrose is going to play. Oh no, they're fetching now. Okay, I guess they're stand play stand on saleable and fetching to do it. So they're only getting five net life from that. I don't think that's really worth it. Nope. And the it's pretty is, risky to go low, even even though Neon doesn't have it. Well, no, the thing with yes. Burns oh, is... Oh yeah, stand. The, the thing with Burns is that they cap out at 3 damage per card, so there was no way that Neon had lethal that turn on Anvils, who's way above well, 6 life. At, at this point, notably, that's not necessarily true, because there's several on the Season Flames in the bin. Oh, right, right. But With the theoretical, like, God Hand, like, it's possible. Yeah, I guess. But are you really playing around the god hands instead of the normal hands? <laughs> because that was a perfect opportunity to play Freaker Sanctum, tapped, and then seek prophecy. But anyways, Neon throws all their burn at Ambrose, and they pass empty-handed. They're out of steam, and Ambrose is actually not doing that well either, because they need to seek prophecy for a land. Well, there's a land, and there's a thought- I mean, they can take Wormian Falls, right? I mean, referral is less life lost in the end because the game's gonna end super soon. And then play Precursor Sanctum tapped because you have the opportunity to. Yep. And then Midnight Call. You probably Midnight Call Turi. Yeah. Since Tyrant is. You have to stack one land. Ha ha. You gain one life. Uh, you gain one life. Ambrose is taking quite a while to think about what the. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Uh, they, I guess they whipped on Precursor Sanctum because they Precursor Sanctum and Precursor Sanctum. Yeah, it looks like Forest Forest Precursor. On CC Flames or... <laughs> no, on CC Flames. Okay. How many damage is that? Five, right? Five, so that's lethal if... It doesn't actually matter because it's dirty, but... <laughs> At this point, Neon's deck is like... Let me count. So there's 12 Unceasing Flames by 100. There's like 12 Unceasing Flames in there by now. Amazing. I mean, if Ambrose didn't have Turi and they had to Midnight Call in the entire Tributes, then there was a chance that Neon wins by top decking and then seeking Flames. Uh, too bad Turi exists. I mean, on the other hand, like, how fast does Turi kill anyways? Can Neon just keep top decking and seeking Flames and kill Ambrose before Ambrose kills with Turi? <laughs> Token? Keep, just keep on uh, top decking those unceasing Flames. Oh, that's not that's an unceasing Flames. That's actually really bad. Cast that. Wait, are you, you not going to at least orchestrate yeah. that, right? You should at least orchestrate that. In case you drop Raiden's Hakelich or something. Yeah, because you might, you can draw a red card next turn. Perhaps an Unceasing Flames, even. If you draw Unceasing Flames, then that's fine, because you can orchestrate and then Unceasing Flames in the same turn, but you're mostly worried about Raiden. Raiden's Hakelich yeah. exactly is the main thing to be worried about. Picks up Turi. I mean, no target. You don't want Turi to die Ooh. just yet. I guess you can Precursor Sanctum to Precursor Sanctum. But Precursor Sanctum uses play, so you can actually play lands off of it. Yeah. Like, you can give Precursor Sanctum another spin if you want. Ambrose decides not to do that. Second Storm Saints, okay. Double Orchestrate 
if you draw well, no what what why don't, don't at that count. point you need to orchestrate those yeah down. so unceasing flames will do six. oh that's one short of actually killing yeah like if they orchestrate just minuses again so oh right uh oh so hey, that's, but, that's 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 probably a game okay but yeah. but like ambrose not spinning the wheel on precursor sanctum is a huge disappointment because they had nothing else to use the mana for right ambrose cast off precursor sanctum then the precursor sanctum off your precursor sanctum unceasing so. flames hey yeah like mm -hmm. if you orchestrate that thing beforehand just run 20 unceasing flames so good yeah just keep drawing unceasing flames I mean, that's why it's called unceasing flames, because you keep drawing them, and opponent has if to keep he, dealing with them. If it ceased, it would be a flavor fail. Yeah. Wait, does that mean using forbidden treasures on unceasing flames is a flavor fail? It is. You're ceasing the flames. Well, that actually, that's a flavor win, because you're ceasing the flame. Yeah, but what about the other two? You put them in a casket, and they can't go anywhere. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the deep discussion of the flavor of unceasing flames. This is what happens when we commentate burn games where there's basically no decision making and somehow Neon still <laughs> manages to make the wrong decisions by not orchestrating the storm surges. Yeah, that's commendable to a degree. Yeah. You, you only get so many decisions and you make them wrong still. Yeah, but anyways, I think that's enough for today. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.